Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for coming. We're going to get started in just one minute. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to Fat Diet Friend Not Foe with Dr. Maria Chavez Santos. Before we begin, just one quick note, please keep your questions until the end of the presentation. When you ask your questions, you can use either the chat box or the Q&A box, I'll be monitoring both. And at the end of the session, I'll read those questions out loud to the doctor. Um, I want to start out by thanking Dr. Chavez Santos, Nikki Medeiros, and the Hackensack Meridian Palisades Medical Center for generously donating their time this evening to arrange and participate in this lecture. We really appreciate you guys coming out this evening. Um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Maria Chavez Santos. She is a bilingual Spanish speaking family medicine physician who was born in Ecuador and grew up in Fort Lee, New Jersey. She completed her undergraduate degree in neuroscience and behavior at Columbia University, followed by medical school at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the Bronx. She is a graduate of the Hunterton Medical Center Residency Program, where she served as chief resident. Her clinical interests include nutrition, women's health, and family planning, with a strong emphasis on patient education. So without further ado, I'll turn things over to Dr. Chavez Santos. Thank you. So today, uh, I wanted to talk about um, fats, because I think this is a big topic, and a lot of patients come to me. Um, with a lot of, of misconceptions about what's good for us and what's bad for us. And this is my, um, my goal in, in educating people a lot more in terms of um, good versus bad fats. Uh, so we're going to learn a little bit more about that today. And hopefully uh, you'll come out of it um, a lot wiser. So fats... Um, or lipids. Uh, you'll probably hear that a lot when you go to the doctor. Lipid is just um, uh, the medical word for, for fats, including oil, and cholesterol, triglycerides, a lot of keywords, which I'm sure you've heard uh, when you get your physical, when, when you go see your doctor. Um, but it's just a general term. Uh, and we're going to go through some definitions so that you can understand a little bit more as we, as we move through this topic. So cholesterol is a type of lipid. Okay. And cholesterol is actually something very important. We need it because cholesterol is the building block of, of, hormones. We, we need cholesterol to make things like testosterone and estrogen. Um, we need it to make vitamin D. Uh, we need it for, to make the bile that gets stored in our gallbladder. We need to um, have cholesterol because it's part of the building block of the membranes of our cells all throughout our body. So it's actually very, very important. So cholesterol is often vilified, but it's actually a very important part of our survival. And often when we think about um, dietary cholesterol, um, it's, it's not the same as the, as the blood or the serum cholesterol that um, our doctor talks to us about. So dietary cholesterol obviously is what we eat and it comes from animals. Um, so dietary cholesterol in itself is not essential, meaning um, our liver makes it. So we don't really need to eat it because our liver makes it. Um, and, uh, and it's, it's different from blood cholesterol. That's what you talk about when you look at your blood work. Um, so that's made by the cells in our body, mostly by our liver and it's found in our bloodstream. But when we talk about that total cholesterol, when we look at it in our, in our blood work, it's actually calculated by looking at your LDL levels, your 
HDL levels and your triglycerides and your triglycerides, as you can see, are divided by five. And so we're going to get into what, what all these um, cholesterols actually mean. Okay. A fun fact, um, only animal products have cholesterol. Uh, plant products can contain fat, but they don't contain cholesterol. So when you look at things like peanut butter, avocado, um, vegetable oils, they, none of them have cholesterol. So a lot of these things are packaged as zero cholesterol. Yes, that's, you know, if, if you are educated on, on fats and what cholesterol is, you'll know that if it comes from a non-animal source, they automatically will not have cholesterol. So a lot of us hear these keywords LDL and HDL, right? And so what does that actually mean? So they're actually proteins. They're not cholesterol, okay? So they're called lipoproteins. And there's these small proteins that carry fat throughout the bloodstream for different functions. So if you look at the pictures that I've put here on the slides, LDL and HDL are very similar. They contain different things, including cholesterol and triglycerides. If you look at both pictures, they both include that. What differs between them is the protein. So LDL um, proteins are characterized by ApoB proteins versus ApoA proteins in, in HDL. And um, LDL or low density lipoproteins are considered bad cholesterol, right? Even though they're not really a cholesterol molecule. And they're bad because they increase your risk of heart disease, okay? And how does it do this? Well, it distributes cholesterol to the cells in the body. And in excess, right, in excess, if there's an excess of th that delivery, we're gonna start forming plaques in our arteries. And once those plaques, well, when they, if they break off, you can get a stroke, or if it accumulates so much that it blocks off circulation, you can get a different kind of stroke or you can get a heart attack, things like that. So that's why it's known as bad cholesterol. HDL or high density lipoprotein is considered the good cholesterol in our body. And that's because it usually decreases your risk of heart disease. Um, and the way it does this is that its function is actually to move any of that extra cholesterol from our tissues to the liver and then the liver disposes of it, okay? And, um, it prevents buildup of this plaque in the arteries um, in that way, okay? But just very important for you to know, they're actually um, proteins that, that carry col cholesterol and triglycerides for different functions, okay? So when we talk about triglycerides, they're actually the main form of fat that we have in our body. And this is super important. Your body actually stores excess calories especially the excess calories that we get from carbohydrates as triglycerides, okay? So triglycerides, I, I put the molecular structure here, but they can be uh, composed of any combination of, of three fatty acids, and that's those purple squiggly lines there, saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fatty acids. And I'm gonna talk about that and what that means, um, but triglycerides are made of any combination of them. So there are different kinds of triglycerides. And when the liver detects that there's a lot of triglycerides, it actually um, produces more cholesterol. So we can get triglycerides from our food, okay? So, you know, a, a nice fatty meal will give you a lot of triglycerides or our liver can make triglycerides. So triglycerides, I just wanna point out, triglycerides in the realm of good or bad um, are, not, are not so great. Um, so if we talk about uh, food that increases triglycerides, usually not, not the best kind of food for our heart health. So getting into these fatty acids, right? We hear the terms monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, saturated fatty acids. What does that all mean? Okay. So looking at polyunsaturated fatty acids, those are your omegas and people hear a lot about omega-3 and omega-6. 
fatty acids and the food that's rich in them. So I think this is important to understand. And really, if you look at the picture, the, the difference is where there's double bonds um, in the molecular structure, okay? So these are essential to us, meaning our bodies cannot generate them, right? Cholesterol is not essential because our bodies can make cholesterol. Polyunsaturated fatty acids, we need to eat them because our bodies can't make them and they're important. Okay, so looking at this breakdown of omega-3 versus omega-6 fatty acids, right? So for omega-3 fatty acids, we can get them either from marine sources or plant sources. So your marine sources contain the fatty acids DHA and EPA. Okay, now I'm sure you've heard about this. A lot of um, formulas for babies have DHA, right? So it might be something that you see on the shelves. Okay, and so marine sources are fish, especially the fatty fish like salmon, sardines, anchovies. Um, you can get them in shellfish. And for vegans, they can get them from oil that you collect from algae. And I just put in here something interesting uh, for anyone that wants to increase their intake of omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, wild salmon is best, um, trout and sardines, because they have a, a high uh, percentage of omega-3s, but they're low in mercury. Mercury is often a, um, a concern when eating a lot of fish, okay, versus um, tuna is, is a, you know, it's a nice fatty fish but it, it is high in mercury as, as well as swordfish. And then there are other fish that, you know, people tend to eat because, you know, they're not, they don't have that fishy flavor, but they really don't have that much omega-3 and that's uh, catfish and, and tilapia. So in the world of fish, um, you know, I would say salmon is, is probably the best source. Uh, salmon, sardines uh, are the best source of um, omega-3. And then when you look at plants, they the type of polyunsaturated fatty acid they contain um, is called ALA, and you find um, you find uh, this in walnuts, in flax seeds, and chia seeds, and hemp seeds, uh, in Brussels sprouts as well. So so your green vegetables. Um, and I included a picture because people often, when I speak about chia seeds and, and flax seeds, especially, they don't really know what they are. So on the right, you see chia seeds, they're these, they're brown dots that expand and you can mix them um, in your food. They're tasteless as are flax seeds, which are a little bigger, but excellent sources of omega-3. And so the benefits of omega-3 is that they, lower your triglycerides, which we said we want to do. Interestingly, they don't lower your LDL, but they do lower your triglycerides. And they have a lot of other great benefits. Um, they decrease your risk of heart attacks and strokes. They have shown to have a mild decrease in, uh, in your blood pressure, both in the top and bottom numbers known as systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Um, they decrease inflammation in your body. And we're seeing more and more that inflammation in the body is linked to things like cancer. Um, so, so that's uh, a great benefit. Um, it can prevent blood clots. Um, and it's been shown to help in your brain function and also in your mental health. So in things like ADHD and depression, um, it's been shown to be beneficial. And I, as I referred to before, um, it's very important for mothers to eat um, a lot of omega-3s um, when they're pregnant because the DHA helps um, brain and vision development in the growing fetus. So very, very important. And also for babies, you know, our brains are mostly made of fat uh, and babies' brains are developing. So we need to give them a lot of omega-3s, children, but uh, adults as well for all these reasons that I listed. So they did a study um, of about 7,500 people and, um, and they found that the recommendation is at having at least one to two seafood meals per week. Um, and it's been shown to reduce the risk of a lot of heart issues, congestive heart failure, coronary artery disease, ischemic stroke, meaning stroke that is um, caused by lack of blood flow to the brain and 
dying suddenly of a, of a cardiac issue, especially if we're using these seafood meals to replace the intake of less healthy foods, right? And now the omega-6s. So the types of omega-6 fatty acids are linoleic acid and arachidonic acid. Really linoleic acid is the most prevalent. I think it's over 90% of omega-3s are, are contain linoleic acid. And those can be found in your vegetable oils, your canola oil, your sunflower oil, your, your corn oil, your soybean oil, um, in peanut oils and seeds, okay? Now, throughout the lecture, you're gonna hear some differing um, findings. So here's where it gets a little controversial. So omega-6s are reported at times to be anti-inflammatory and to lower your LDL, your bad cholesterol, especially if you are using these fats to replace trans fats and saturated fats. Okay, and I'll get into that a little in a little bit. Um, arachidonic acid, you'll find that in red meat and eggs and poultry. Um, and in excess, it has been asso associated with inflammatory conditions, um, diabetes, things like that. So there is this controversy about whether the ratio of the omega-6s to omega-3s matter. Um, and there are some studies that have found that um, the higher the ratio, meaning the more omega-6s versus omega-3s you consume, the higher you, risk you have of developing inflammatory and autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and diabetes, as well as heart conditions and cancer. So the traditional Western diet, uh, the ratio is between 15 to 1 and 17 to 1, omega-6 to omega-3. And we're finding that it might actually be better for our health for the ratio to be 1 to 1 or 4 to 1, so a little bit lower. So we really have to be aware of those vegetable oils, right? Because those are contain, contain omega-6. So there's been a big, big push uh, in recent decades to switch to vegetable oils like canola oil, like corn oil. And um, it actually might be more harmful. Um, and I'll make another point about that a little later as well. So moving on to monounsaturated fatty acids. Um, so when I think of monounsaturated fatty acids, I think of the Mediterranean diet. And I highlighted the letter M just because of mono and Mediterranean, just to help you remember it a little better. And the Mediterranean diet is um, based a lot around having nuts and um, uh, at least two, if not three, um, meals based on fish and seafood um, in a week. Um, not so much red meat, obviously not so many sweets, um, and a lot of legumes, meaning uh, beans and things like that, a lot of olive oil um, and uh, whole wheat grains. But in terms of the fatty acids uh, in the Mediterranean diet, um, the ones that have the monounsaturated fatty acids are the nuts, um, the olives and the seeds, especially almonds. Um, avocado is also very high in monounsaturated fatty acids. And um, like I said, uh, olive oil, canola oil and peanut oil. So you'll see that there is some overlap, right? A lot of foods contain a combination of different types of, of fats, um, and some are more predominantly um, higher in, in monounsaturated and some more in trans fats. But canola oil does fall into this category as well. Um, so the benefits of monounsaturated fatty acids are many. Uh, again, they lower our bad cholesterol, they increase our good cholesterol. Uh, they may be anti-cancerous, and I'll explain that to you. Um, they decrease your blood pressure, they're also anti-inflammatory, decrease risk of blood clots and of heart disease in general. Um, and interestingly, when comparing extra virgin olive oil to virgin olive oil, 
Extra virgin olive oil has these micronutrients that we find in plants that are antioxidant. They're called polyphenols. And the more polyphenols we have, um, the more we find that we increase our good cholesterol and it might have some anti-cancerous properties because it's an antioxidant. So when choosing between olive oils, extra virgin olive oil is the way to go. And they did this big, big study um, that found that the Mediterranean type diet uh, actually reduced our, our risk of heart attack, stroke, death by about 30%. Interestingly enough, this is in comparison to a low fat diet. So very, very important. Um, and it's actually um, proposed often by cardiologists for people who have heart disease to start a Mediterranean diet because of this finding. And then moving on to saturated fatty acids, the difference between saturated and unsaturated, I put in here a, a picture, is that unsaturated fatty acids have a double bond. It's, it's basically the chemistry, okay? So when you think of saturated fatty acids, those are your red meats, um, your butter, or any full fat dairy, coconut oil, and palm oil. And again, there's a lot of controversy um, about whether this is good or bad. So I'm gonna present that to you. Um, saturated fatty acids are thought to be bad because they increase your LDL, your bad cholesterol. Um, interestingly, they also decrease your triglycerides, which is actually a good thing. That's why I put it in green. And they inc increase your, your good fats, your good cholesterol. Okay. So even though they increase your LDL, uh, they did a study where they actually analyzed 21 studies. Um, and that was studying over 300,000 patients. And when they looked at these 21 studies, that's called the meta-analysis, they found that there is no real evidence uh, that supports that a diet that's high in saturated fats is linked to heart disease at all. So it might not actually be a bad thing. And in, in looking more into this, in people who keep a low carbohydrate diet, if you look at their levels of saturated fats, both in their tissues and flowing through their blood, those levels actually are lower when comparing it to others who maybe are eating a regular American diet, um, high in, higher in carbs and watching their saturated fats. So very important because this, this is where it gets a little confusing for people. They say, well, I'm, I'm not eating red meat, but you know, they, they're still having pasta or rice um, every day or bread. And it might actually be, um, more beneficial or not as risky to keep the red meat, to keep the full fat dairy and lower your carbs because it's not really gonna make much of a difference when I measure your saturated fat levels in your blood, it's not gonna make much of a difference if you're cutting that out. But again, this is controversial. Um, and then just looking at it a little bit more in detail, interestingly enough, there have been some studies that say, well, Maybe we need to look at whether the meats that we eat are processed versus unprocessed because some studies have shown that if we're eating processed meats, meaning sausage, hot dogs, cold cuts versus uh, unprocessed meats, sorry, that's a typo, versus unprocessed meats or sources of, uh, unsaturated, of uh, saturated fatty acids that come from dairy or plants, you actually have a higher risk of heart disease, okay? So maybe staying away from uh, sausages uh, is better. Uh, and if you need to choose between a kind, one kind of meat and the other, choosing a, a cut of steak might be a little bit better for you. Now, the next type of uh, fatty acid that's important to discuss uh, are trans fatty acids. And these are out in the media a lot. You know, the government has done a lot to um, 
decrease how much is in our food, thankfully. Um, and when we're talking about these trans fats, um, it's important to, to distinguish between whether they're fully hyd hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated. And again, I put in the chemistry here just so that you understand. So hydrogenation of fat basically means adding hydrogen to fat. And the reason why companies would do this is because it makes that fat more solid and more stable so that it lasts longer on the shelves and it makes it cheaper. So when we talk about these bad trans fatty acids, we're really thinking about partially hydrogenated, okay? So partially hydrogenated fats contain trans fats versus fully hydrogenated fats they contain mostly saturated fats, which we just talked about. So these trans fats are what we find in our snacks, in processed food, in cookies, in cakes, and that's in your fried fast food, okay? So I included a picture of all these things because often we turn to crackers or cookies or pretzels even, or popcorn as a healthy snack but they're actually high in trans fats. Um, and then there's the obvious things like your pizza, your burgers, um, uh, margarine is a big source of trans fats. So what trans fats do that's bad is that they increase your LDL, your bad cholesterol, and they decrease your HDL, okay? They cause inflammation in the body. And in all these ways, they increase your risk of heart disease. So trans fats are bad fats. Now, remember, we can also ingest cholesterol. So as I said before, dietary cholesterol is only from animal products, um, eggs, meat, chicken, fish, okay? Here's another source of controversy because they can increase your LDL a little bit and they can also possibly increase your total blood cholesterol, but it's questionable whether this actually leads to heart disease or strokes. There are some studies that say it does do this in people with diabetes, but in the general population without diabetes, it might not matter. It might not, even though they, they increase your LDL and your total blood cholesterol, it might not make a difference in terms of your heart health. So eggs, eggs are a big, big source of controversy and something that often comes up when, when people come to see me, whether they should have the eggs, you know, the egg with the yolk or just the egg whites. So I'll, I'll give you the information and, and you can choose to make your own decision with it. Um, I, I am a proponent of eggs myself. I do tell my patients that they should. Uh, and you'll see why. Um, so there is not really a definitive link between the dietary cholesterol um, that you get from eggs or from any of these other sources of, of cholesterol um, that, that I, I put in this slide, the, the meat, the chicken, the fish. Um, there's really a not a clear link between that and your risk of heart, heart attacks or stroke or even dying. There are some studies that show that maybe it's a dose response association, meaning the more you eat it, the higher the risk, the less you eat it, the lower the risk, but it's really unclear. And um, egg yolks actually have a lot of good cholesterol in them. And some studies have found that egg yolks, especially, can decrease um, or be useful against fighting hardening or deposit of plaques, plaque in the, in the walls of our arteries. So they can be useful against atherosclerosis. And um, the yolk uh, especially has been found to also decrease LDL and triglycerides if you are consuming a low carbohydrate diet. So is it because of the low carbs or is it because of the yolk? It's unclear, but probably a combination of both. So bottom line, probably eating eggs is not so bad, not so bad, especially um, compared to if you're gonna eat an egg versus a bag of pretzels, right? Or um, a slice of pizza. So 
getting to some bottom lines, right? Because there is a lot of controversy, this is where it becomes confusing. Definitely your safe bets are eating lots of avocado, extra virgin olive oil, um, salmon, sardines, not seeds, right? Very similar to your Mediterranean diet. And obviously cutting down on the fried fast food, the margarine, any of the processed foods. Not to say you can't have fried food, right? You can fry it using olive oil, things like that. Um, but, but try to avoid things like margarine. So, um, you know, that, that's a little bit different from what we've been taught, right? Margarine over butter. It might actually be better to do butter over margarine, right? Butter being a, a saturated fat. And just some food for thought, uh, vegetable oils, which we've discussed um, before, such as canola oil, the way they extract them is they use solvents. Um, one, of them, one of the solvents they use is called hexane, and it can actually make these oils a little bit more unstable and instability can lead to inflammation in the body. Um, and also most, most vegetable oils contain a small amount of trans fats as well. Um, so I am not personally a big proponent of using corn or canola oil. Um, uh, some, more and more, I think we're starting to see that it probably is more on the unhealthy side. And then just in general, other ways to improve our cholesterol uh, is by exercising. So uh, exercise increases your good cholesterol, your HDL, and it decreases both triglycerides and LDL which is what we want. Um, if you're a cigarette smoker, cigarette smoking lowers your HDL. Um, so if you want to improve that, you might want to consider quitting smoking. And then really important, um, don't forget that excess carbohydrates are converted into fat by our liver and our body stores excess carbohydrates as this fat. So if weight loss is your goal, um, and even if lowering your cholesterol is your goal, it's really, really important not just to consume and be able to distinguish between good or bad fats, but to cut your intake of carbohydrates. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. You'll see uh, my office, my phone number are there. All right, so we do have one question already waiting in the chat box. And again, you guys can put your questions in both the chat box or the Q&A box. I'll be looking at both. Um, the first question we have, do you know if red snapper has high omega-3? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know specifically red snapper, but um, it's an easy Google. I can look that up for you actually right now. I think it does. I think it does, but I'd like to answer that appropriately. Red snapper. So let's see. Yeah, I was I was right. Yeah, it it does contain um, uh, a lot of, of good omega threes. Uh, so a hundred grams. Uh, so red snapper contains 0 0.31 grams which is okay, it's not too bad, per 100 grams of the actual snapper. So per 100 grams of the fish, you get 0.31 grams of omega-3s, which is not too bad. Thank you. I've got one other question waiting here. Um, what do you think about using coconut oil? Um, personally and professionally, I, my answer to that is I'm a big proponent of it. I am a big proponent of it. I think uh, I've looked a lot into this because, you know, with, with things like the keto diet now becoming more and more popular, um, the keto diet um, does promote the use of coconut oil. And so I've, in my reading and my research, I haven't really found um, a strong link between coconut oil and a lot of um, heart disease, like people initially thought. Um, so I would promote the use of coconut oil, especially over, like I said, um, your other, other oils like canola oil or, or corn oil. I think those are probably a lot more harmful. Um, so I would give uh, coconut oil the green light. Thank you. Um, and once again, if anyone has any other questions, oh, here's one coming in. Um, cutting out carbohydrates completely is difficult. Do you have a carbohydrate range recommendation? It is very difficult. 
Um, I would ease into it. So if you look at it, I've looked at this, I look at this with my patients a lot when I do physicals. Usually people are in the 150 to 300 net carbs. So this is looking at net carbohydrates. And, and I do wanna do a talk about this because that's important. But when looking at net carbs, people's intake per day is anywhere between 150-ish, in my experience, and 300. So if you can do it slowly, maybe a couple of weeks of cutting down to 100 net carbs per day, um, that would be good. Ideally, you want to get down to less than 80 net carbs per day. And if you increase your intake of healthy fats, you likely won't be as hungry as you think you will be. And things like meat, chicken, fish, eggs are low or have pretty much zero net carbs. So you can still feel full and satisfied and, and cut down on your carbs. I would recommend doing it gradually, but less than 80 is good. Um, you know, things like the keto diet, you do less than 25 net carbs a day. That's a little bit more extreme. Um, so start out gradually, but yes, it is very difficult. Thank you. All right. Um, it doesn't look like I have any other questions in the chat box or the Q&A. So I would like to say thank you, Dr. Chavez Santos, for coming out tonight. We really appreciate you donating your time to come here and give this wonderful lecture. I'm sure everyone very much enjoyed it. Um, I also want to thank Hackensack Meridian Medical Center also for arranging this talk for us. Um, and I'd like to thank everyone who came out tonight to watch the lecture as well. I hope you all had a wonderful evening. And thank you, Dr. Shava Santos, for coming out thank this evening. You. It's my pleasure. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night. You too. Bye-bye.